Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time to go through the papers and see what uh, major stories uh, we can share with you this morning. Uh, we're joined uh, and, uh, this morning by Mr. Ambrose Igboke. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good, Good morning. morning. Great to have you on The Breakfast. Let's start with the Punch newspapers. It should be on your screen in just a few seconds and share with you the big ones. They're the major one you can see. Yes, you have it. It says, Buhari set to represent... Loretta Onochie, PDP and senators differ over rejection. Nomination viable. Buhari hasn't withdrawn confidence in her, the president uh, says the presidency source. Onochie not rejected because of political affiliation, says INEC committee chair. And ruling party desperate to hang onto power by all means, alleges opposition um, uh, PDP. Also on the punch this morning. High unemployment threatening Buhari's poverty reduction plan, says AFDB. Crisis looms in APC over registered members and consensus agreement. Delta variant, rapid spread fear, uh, fear rises as Nigerians abandon COVID-19 rules. Still on the punch this morning, EFCC breaks into a Lagos hotel, arrest 30 <laughs> over fraud. And three killed as military officers clash with Lagos traders. APC rebukes factional youths demanding Abdurazak's removal. And also Kaduna bandits slaughtered 222, kidnapped 774 in three months, says Commissioner. Hmm. CCT chair tackles Senate in court. National Assembly threatens judges' arrest. And uh, these are the ones on the punch newspapers this morning. On the nation, 41.2 million vaccine doses come in this month. Government ops COVID-19 battle. Media bill on hold at House of Representatives. A sponsor backs down. Nigeria lucky to remain despite challenges, says Buhari. Kaduna, 222 killed, 774 kidnapped in three months. AKT, confiscate house used for rape. Oyetola picks Omoware as liaison officer. Ainek job. Honor Che's rejection good for democracy. House asks Buhari to fight insurgency with mercenaries. Three fed killed as soldiers. Louts clash at Ladipo Market. Governor's Lord Tinobu for refurbishing Arawa House Library. Those are the stories on the nation. All right, and now to the Daily Sun newspapers. We can see here Ainek. Senate dams Buhari, rejects Onoche. PDP, Northern Youth, CTA, hail decision. Igbo, who stand by Kanu Oaneze, insists. That's all on the Daily Sun also. Senate goes tough on electoral violence. Nigeria, lucky to remain united despite challenges, says President Buhari. As he receives a security report, Senate proposes a minimum 18 years of age for UTME candidates. And also anti-open grazing bill passes first reading in Delta Assembly. Anti-media bills, sponsors, surrenders. Kill the bill, PDP, Afenifere, <laughs> Ohaneze, NUJ, NGE and others tell reps. And uh, also Ikitito sees house and hotel used for rape. More interesting stories on the Daily Independent newspaper. Senate OK's 20-year jail term for ballot box snatching. 10-year imprisonment for vote buying, 20 million naira fine for hate speech, five years sentence for false information against public officers, passes bill to establish National Electoral Offenses Commission. MBF, PANDEF, PDP, IPSS, Lord Senate for rejecting Honor Chase nomination. <coughs> PIB, TUC, marketers reject limiting fuel importation to refiners. Senate may amend law establishing jamb over age limit of candidates. NBC, NPC bills suspended. That's according to the sponsor. Reps condemn police handling of Chidi Masipa TV boss case. Buhari says, I wonder why Nigerians accept me despite not being rich. Again, reps urge use of mercenaries to combat insurgency. Money laundering charge. Dokwesi asked courts to unfreeze his account, release documents. All right. Um, on The Guardian, mm. I think we can quickly just squeeze in a few. Lawmakers buckle, suspend the media censorship bill. 
reject on our chair. Senate OK's Electoral Offenses Commission, 20-year jail for offenders. IGP exempts vehicles with factory-fitted uh, tinted glasses from permit ban. And bandits kill eight, raise Anguai's house on others in a fresh Zangon Kataf attack. Four feared dead in Ladiport traders' soldiers clash. Um, I think we can stop here. Uh, good morning once again, Mr. Ibuki. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. All right. Um, the headlines. Yeah, so there's um, one story that I believe makes uh, headlines across the papers, and that is the rejection of uh, Loretta Onochie. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Do you think that the National Assembly did the right thing? Uh, the National Assembly uh, actually did the right thing for uh, rejecting that nomination. Uh, that nomination should not have happened in the first place. Uh, it was too, um, you know, confrontational to the uh, our collective uh, sense of uh, equity and good conscience. Uh, Loretta Onoche has been very. is not just a member of uh, the ruling party. She has been somebody who has been vociferous <coughs> in defending her principle. That is her job. I, I will not hold it against her. She did her job very well by always being the forefront of defending her principle, her political party. And even in that, uh, she uh, created a lot of headlines for the kind of outburst she, she uses uh, during those uh, encounters. Yes. And all of a sudden, she denies being a member of uh, uh, that same political party she has vehemently fought for. So uh, it doesn't add up. Um, the president has been advised right from the time he muted the nomination to withdraw that that he didn't, and it went all the way to the uh, screening at the caucus level, and then when it was also presented at the plenary, uh, they said that no. But um, what is also intriguing is the fact that the senators uh, said that her uh, not being cleared was not her affiliation or the jobs she had done as a spokesperson of a political party or of her principal. Uh, who is actively politics, but because there was already a nomination from her state, Delta State. Uh, she disputed that during the uh, screening period because she said that uh, the nominee that the student is saying that is from Delta State is actually nominated for another state where she, the person was married to. So uh, the Delta State should come up to clear the air on this. Whether the person that the senate is saying that is nominated was nominated for Delta State or for, for her husband's state, so that Delta State can have its own slot. And then we are hearing also that the president said that if he, uh, pillars from the president say she will be uh, resubmitted for uh, a screening. I think uh, if I uh, will advise the presidency to let it lie, um, it is taken that uh, a loyalist should be rewarded. So there are several other positions in Nigeria that uh, she can be rewarded with. I mean, there are a lot of board appointments, a lot of uh, chief executive positions that are available, and a lot of other, uh, you know, pecks of office that are built in Nigeria. So if you are pushing for her to be an electoral commissioner, people, of course, will rightly think that there's a hidden agenda because our electoral process has to be respected. The integrity of that process has to be intact. And when somebody like uh, Loretta Noche gets into as an electoral commissioner, then we can start questioning INEC itself, and it should be a very dangerous trend for our democracy. Okay. Right. So on the Daily uh, Sun, the Daily Independent newspaper, we saw a story here that the Senate has allocated a 20-year jail term for ballot box snatching, amongst many other uh, recommendations here, and uh, a, a 40 million naira fine or imprisonment of at least 20 years for you know people who basically you know, get involved in electoral misconduct. Um, this basically follows a passage of a bill uh, based on a report by the committee on INEC. Um, there's been lots of, you know, talk regarding election prep for 2023. Um, do you see this as appropriate? Oh, well, first of all, I would say that the Nigerian Senate can be very wonderful in some of the submissions they make. One actually thinks sometimes whether these things are thought through before they come to announce it to us. Um, you are making uh, electoral back, uh, ballot back trash uh, snatching. That's very, very tough. But at the same time, we have some governors, we have some senators saying that they will not want to embrace the electronic voting. 
when electronic voting is in full gear and uh, it is really, really inculcated into our electoral process, then there will be less of ballot box uh, snatching. Because why ballot box slack, uh, snatching is very, very, um, you know, relevant now is because we are still using manual systems of voting where uh, ballot papers are stopped in ballot boxes and then they are snatched to be, you know, altered. But if it is trans if the electoral results are transmitted uh, electronically, then there will be less incidence of ballot boxes. So the politicians across all the world, both the north and the south, because I heard a governor from the north saying last time that the north cannot do e-voting. How can we have the same election in Nigeria and uh, we are trying to create a dichotomy saying that one part of the country will do manner and the other part of the country will do uh, e-voting uh, e uh, or e-collation. Therefore, um, anybody who is saying that uh, they cannot embrace e collation of uh, transmission of results, uh, we have to question the person's uh, sincerity about our electoral process. Okay, Mr. Mr. Iboke, um, I think updates on that is that um, they have let that stand, the electronic transmission of results. But regarding this... Um, these very stringent punishments for ballot box snatching, vote buying, and all of that. Um, I, I think where many people might be concerned will be the area of prosecution, because we know that Nigeria does not lack laws. It's prosecution that it becomes the challenge, isn't it? I think uh, the sentence is just playing to the gallery, because um, those laws are not in able. Uh, you talk about the punishment. Let's say uh, the Nigerian Senate should concentrate more maybe on the corruption. We want to see laws that have to deal with corruption. These laws on ballot box uh, snatching is not uh, uh, very, very tenable. We should make it less, rather more stringent for ballot boxes to be irrelevant in our electoral uh, in our electoral processes. And in that way, we don't want it to prosecute anybody because we will not make it possible. But this, I think, is just playing to the gallery because ballot box snatchers are mostly sometimes faceless people, and uh, most of them are also working for some of these politicians. So I don't, I'm not excited by, uh, by that. Right now, we should bring up systems that make ballot box very, very unattractive. All right, let's uh, move over to, uh, to the punch now. There's a story in the punch that says 222 um, people killed and about 700 plus uh, kidnapped in Kaduna State in uh, about three months. Uh, react to that also, because, you know, in, in any other place in the world, 200 people uh, being killed by bandits or whoever else should, you know, be enough to, uh, uh, you know, place a state of emergency. Well, first of all, I, I, I believe that uh, figure is grossly inadequate, is un, un, underreported, uh, because these are figures that maybe the state government, know, uh, government knows about. There are several other ki uh, killings that have been going on quietly uh, in, in that part of the country and in other parts of the country as well. Uh, so uh, it's underreported. There are so many others. Sometimes we hear communities being sacked and over 100 bodies counted, but these things are downplayed. So uh, 200 and something is grossly inadequate representation of the, uh, uh, of the actualities on ground. And uh, that is the value we place on human life in Nigeria. We don't place premium on human life of the Nigerian citizens. Therefore, we just can't, like the other time, you see people report, oh, they say 50 people say, oh, no, only 10 people die. A country that says only 10 people die. Therefore, does not have premium on the on the, on the lives of the citizens. Therefore, uh, we are we are uh, Nigerians are taking it in the strides at the cons because it is very clear that it seems the federal government is not tackling this issue the way it's supposed to be uh, tackled. It's, it's a pity that we are losing our fellow citizens in this way and nothing is being done. Urgently, I think the security apparatus of Nigeria should wake up and ensure that this thing can stop immediately. Okay, so another story here that we've seen across the papers, it's on the Daily Independent as well, and it's, it's about um, the NBC-NPC bills that has been suspended. Um, we know that the sponsor put out this bill, and it had very stringent you know, punishments for members of the press who offend you know, public office holders you know, with lots of jail term and fines, but now it's been suspended. But while we think that's good news, he's explaining that you know, it's just been suspended for a while, 
trial so they can consider it and you know just deliberate over the matter uh, more thoroughly um we know that you know nigerian uh, press uh, you know councils bodies association you know put out statements in the past few days basically saying that the aim of this bill is to cause an information blackout it's to gag the press and that you know it was draconian so um do you think that this suspension should you know should be permanent and that we don't need a bill in, in nigeria space that basically um you know gives strict very strict punishment you know for f you know freely passing out information i think uh, a clear signal for all those who try to want to gag the nigerian press or the media space in nigeria is maybe they should dig out a little about the past uh, it, it, during the abacha era what happened maybe they should go back then where we did guerrilla journalism um they cannot gag the nigerian press the nigerian press is one of the most vibrant press in the world you cannot gag it so they should stop trying and rather concentrate on you know you made a particular point which is valid which is prosecution is the matter there are all relevant laws in nigeria to prosecute those who abuse uh, press freedom there is the law of defamation there is, uh, there, is, there is a law of treason. There are laws of there are different kinds of laws that actually, you know, uh, takes care of abuse of press freedom. And the press freedom and fundamental rights to free speech is encoded in our constitution. It's a constitutional right. In fact, it's a fundamental human right as declared by the United uh, Nations in 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Therefore, people should not just wake up and think they want to guard the Nigerian uh, press. We moved forward some years back when we passed the Freedom of Information Act. We are thinking that we are going ahead. But it seems some people want to take us back uh, to uh, the infamous decrees that operated between 1984 and 1985. Nigeria has gone past that era. But I agree also that there ought to be some form of control, especially with social media. Those controls, we cannot bring out our salient laws, like the laws we used to have, and the laws of like the hate speech can be incorporated into some of the laws we have. And then we tweak them to, you know, to identify uh, and resonate with uh, modern realities. That is what we need to do. But some people bring in laws to criminalize opinions and facts or revelation of uh, 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 things that happen around us and turn it criminal mm. or defamation of character or call it uh, hate speech. Then we cannot allow mm. that to stand as a people. Otherwise, we are gone. All right, Mr. Iboke, uh, two stories I want you to quickly share your thoughts on. They're both on the president. Uh, the first one is on the Daily Sun. It says, Nigeria lucky to remain united despite challenges. Um, and, of course, uh, that's from President Buhari as he receives a security report. And then on the punch this morning, the AFDB says, high unemployment threatening Buhari's poverty reduction plan. All right, so I want your thoughts on both of them, you know, and of course, this basically rates or is rating uh, the performance of President Mohamed Buhari in two different directions. Well, if inflation has increased, um, things are going up. Um, I noticed something in the past four weeks that a lot of, um, when you go to uh, mega shopping malls and uh, uh, sh uh, shops, you find out that some, uh, some parts of the, uh, the malls are getting locked up. Some others, you find that the shelves are getting empty, and uh, that the shelves are getting empty. And I started asking them, what is the problem? They said they're finding it difficult to import. They're finding it difficult to restock. Therefore, we are gradually going back to hyperinflation period, where people cannot even see things to eat. Right now, where people are losing jobs because companies, SMEs, are folding up left, right, and center. Therefore, the inflation increases, and the risk also increases. So that will rather slow down any efforts being made by government for economic advancement. Then when it comes to the issue of uh, Nigeria being lucky, uh, being united, um, I think that is um, not conciliatory enough. That, is, that does not make me feel good. I should feel good because uh, Nigerian citizens should feel good because they are in a united country that cares for them. They are in a united country that is not enough to just say we are united. United in poverty hmm. or united in what? We should be united in prosperity. Therefore, it is time for the government to just wake up to the reality of our diversity and how to use this diversity to advance our prosperity. If we don't do that, then this is a sing song of we are lucky. I can, uh, citizens, citizens don't care about the political divides or the religious divides or the ethnic divides in the country. 
They see the, the next northern and sees the next uh, eastern uh, or southern as his brother when they are when they are on their own. Once you have, give them food, give them uh, job opportunities, give them security of lives and property, and then they will be happy living in a country that is uh, united. But I mean, these things they just tell us, oh, we are lucky to be united. We should be not lucky to be united. We should be happily united and not lucky to be united. Okay. Mr. Woke, I want to ask you a question that really affects lots of Nigerian students. This almost affected me when I was trying to get into school many years ago. And it says, Senate proposes minimum 18 years of age for UTME candidates. And basically, they're saying that, you know, the current minimum age of 16, you know, they need to opt that up to to 18 and you know nigerians are very you know concerned about this saying is age you know the determinant of learning uh, you know ability you know what does the age have to do with 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 that and when you check other countries you find out people you know, there's a, there's a 13 year old, his name is Cal Witch. He had a PhD at the age of 13. There's been people who have graduated college at far, far younger because, you know, they were very intelligent and they had the, you know, national, you know, uh, you know um, there was an enablement in the country for them to be able to thrive and do that regardless of how young they were. So do you think Nigerian lawmakers are making laws in the right direction or do you think that we need to actually up the age? Well, there's a, the, the teachers, there's a term, terminology they use called psychomotor, uh, which, which is the psychological uh, you know, uh, readiness of a child or a particular person to be in a particular class. And then uh, the issue you just mentioned are, uh, are rare cases of uh, child prodigies. Uh, these, are, these are not ordinary children that get PhD at 13. They are whiz kids, okay? So those ones cannot be used as a paradigm for a comparison. Now, if you go to a lot of countries in Europe and even the United States of America, whom we copied our educational system from, most of the children actually go to undergraduate school at 18, most of them. And then there's this craze in Nigeria now for, our, for children to be pushed beyond their classes, their age limits. It's, it's not fair on the development of the child. You see a child that is nine years old and is not already in secondary school, reading JS3, uh, it's not fair. I think the, the, is, uh, the uh, uh, National Assembly is doing the right thing. Um, children should not be found in universities or higher institutions. And when you are not 18, you are a child. Uh, higher institutions should be for adults, for young adults, because they enjoy some high level of freedom. Okay. So most of the cases over the year, we are having about courtism and the rest, are because other age children just get cut loose from their parents at 15 and 14, 16, entering mm. universities. And then they are psychologically imbalanced and they cannot be socially responsible at that age. Okay, Mr. Iboke, your, your, Mr. Iboke your points are valid, but then do we then need to start making amendments to uh, laws when it comes to employment? Because when they're taking this up to, um, you know, 18, the minimum, you want to get the job, you find, you know, the requirements say you must be less than 25, you must have five years of experience. So how would you have been able to graduate, well, you know, those, amass five years of experience that. at the age of 25? So it, do we also need, need, need to make problem. laws to, you know, in that regard? No, we don't, need, we don't need laws. The problem we are having is that because we have lack of employment, we have, uh, we are focused on white collar jobs, their industries have died off, we don't have technical education. We are not diversified in terms of job creation. And that is why the blue chip companies or the corporate entities are giving those uh, uh, rules. Those rules are just meant to ward off people and to streamline applicants, applications. Um, and then some of them are just not uh, realistic. But when we create jobs, when we create technical, when we uh, uh, rev up technical education, when we create opportunities for SMEs and startups, we will have nobody, but many people will not even care about going to apply for these jobs in the first place. Okay. Therefore, right. what I stand with the National Assembly to state that uh, we need to set a standard of maturity for people who are going to a higher institution. So okay. That we can have some Thank you very much, Mr. Ambrose Aboke, Public Affairs Analyst. We did enjoy your analysis on all the stories on the papers this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, all right. Short break, and uh, when we come back, we're going back in history to tell you yes. certain things that happened on this day many years ago.